All right, so we got our ball python here that's just uh, laid a bunch of eggs. We took her off of display once we realized she was gravid and she was inverting herself. When they turn upside down, you can actually see that they're definitely gravid because they're getting uncomfortable, they lie on their backs. So as you can see, we've got a really good clutch. One of the eggs has rolled away. And uh, we're gonna take her eggs now. This is just, uh, we had her in a rack so that she can just lay her eggs in this medium. Uh, it's just some peat and bark, so it's quite uh, moist, humid for the eggs and everything. Just to give her a nice, comfortable spot off of display. And we're gonna be incubating them in this container. So what we use as an incubating, uh, incubation medium is just vermiculite, which is the gold stuff. And then perlite is the white. So I do a bit of a 50-50 mix. Okay, as you can see, this is very, very dry at the moment. So what I normally do, um, you can actually pour boiling water over it, which will also can sterilize it further, but I find that there's not really much of a problem with it anyway. So I'm just gonna throw a whole lot of water in here. Okay, and there's, everyone's got their own thing about how much water you should throw in and everything. I just wanna make sure it's all nice and wet. Okay, so you can see it's oversaturated there. Okay, if there's any dry, it will take it up. But what I can also do is just, uh, sort of hold it, let it all sort of drain. As you can see, it's pooling over here now. And you can just drain the excess off. I'm just draining it here, it doesn't matter, we'll clean that later. Okay, yeah. and also if this water does sit at the bottom, as long as it's not sitting around the eggs and the eggs are sort of drowning in it, it's not really a problem. Okay, so this is a very wet mix, right? But uh, I do this most times and it works out just fine. Okay, you could go a bit of dry mix, um, depending on the species. At the moment we've got some uh, uh, rock monitor eggs in the incubator and we would obviously do a much drier mix for them. Okay, but seeing the ball pythons from West Africa and that it's nice and humid and everything. So I always just sort of do this method and it works just fine. I've got a couple of ventilation holes around the sides so that there's a bit of an air exchange. What some people also do is maybe just have a lid on and you air it every now and again. That sounds like too much work to me. <laughs> so I just have a few air holes just so that there's some air exchange that the eggs can breathe. Okay, so this air is gonna exchange. There's gonna be a gas exchange between the egg shell and the membrane that's inside the egg and those blood vessels will feed the embryo. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the eggs away from her. She is a little bit hissy and trying to protect them, but I mean, it's a ball python. So I'm not too worried about her if she nips me or anything, but I don't think she would. She's obviously just gonna try and hold them tight. Yeah, so we'll just gently take her off of them. We don't wanna roll any of the eggs over because then the babies could possibly drown. Yeah, we just pop her over there. Yeah, so this is, this season, this is the only clutch of ball python eggs we've got. And that is because we do not focus on breeding ball pythons and things. I think I've got about 10 ball pythons with two albinos and that's plenty enough ball pythons for me. So let's see this egg that's rolled away. See it's not a hundred percent oval but it does also look fertile. Okay we maybe we're not going to see with the bright light of the camera but I can see there's quite a lot of redness in there. Uh, maybe if we just turn this light off quickly and then we can light it up a bit. Okay, so you might not be able to see too clearly in the camera, but there are little veins and blood vessels. So it is a fertile egg, it's glowing a sort of red color. So there's a lot of blood vessels in that egg. So we just want to pick them up in the position they are. Okay, you can see all of these got nice, nice blood vessels in there. Okay. Here we go. All right, so always wanna make sure your hands are clean and somewhat cleaner when you're picking up eggs and things. Now, if one's got a whole lot of dust and stuff on it, you don't wanna go and blow it off because then you're blowing slight little bits of spit particles on it, your saliva, and if you incubate that, you're gonna get all kinds of fungus and things growing. Okay, so mommy's not too worried. We're just gonna take her eggs quickly. Just pick them up as they are. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's actually quite a nice size clutch. Okay, that would be sort of to the larger 
size or clutch of a ball pythons will have. Yeah, so let's just take the loose ones first. I'm just gonna rest them on the incubation medium. Okay, we don't wanna bury them too much. And also the ones at the bottom, like this one, if you bury these sort of eggs, then it can actually drown and mold. Okay, so they're actually coming off quite easily, some of them. You can peel them off as well, but we wanna put them, as I say, in the exact position that we find them. Okay. And we can get this one out from underneath because these are pretty fresh, they haven't dried on each other too much and the eggs are actually quite tough, quite leathery. All right, there we go. So now we normally would incubate our ball python or python eggs at about 31.5 degrees. Don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. You guys can easily Google that if you're working with Fahrenheit. Um, so the fact that we've got rock monitor eggs in the incubator and we've got them at about 28.5 degrees. So we're going to incubate these at the same temperature as those. And I have done it before, it just takes a little bit longer. So I mean eggs are a lot hardier than we give them credit for. You know in the wild they're obviously going to experience day night temperatures depending on where they're laid. Obviously if there's laid in something that's decomposing then you're going to have that sort of constant heat, like a, a compost heap or something like that. It's always quite warm if you dig down into it. So those are good for quite sturdy temperatures. But I mean, eggs are much harder than we give them credit for. I mean, I've had plenty of eggs go through power failures and stuff with no issues. But again, that does depend whereabouts in the world you are and how cold it can get. And so you can see here with mom, she's all quite skinny now. So she's going to need some good fattening up. So yeah, the ball python's a really cool snake, very popular in the pet trade. Also all the color mutations and investment animals that there are. But um, yeah, uh, we're not too interested in the ball python mutations and things like that. There's a whole lot of people that jumped on that bandwagon and the market's getting pretty saturated here in South Africa. And um, we're also more focused towards different species of snakes and reptiles. And in my honest opinion, you can have 10 ball pythons, which we've got. They're all the same. They've all got their own little personalities, but they're all pretty much the same. They're not like the best display animals. They're very shy, like to hide away a lot of the time, nocturnal. But um, yeah, there's some other species that are just quite a lot more fascinating to us. But here at Reptile Garden we like all, all the species, they're really cool, each one is unique and that's something that I find in the reptile trade is sort of lacking, everyone's jumping on the little different mutations and things like that, when you can rather have a beautiful normal ball python like this and have a couple like a rat snake, a king snake, they have different species, I mean they act and hunt and behave totally differently to one another, which I find is more interesting. Cool, so hopefully incubation goes well. I would say by looking at these eggs, something would have to go horribly wrong for anything to not hatch. But hopefully we'll see some uh, baby ball pythons in a while. Cool. Okay, so this is our incubator. You can see the temperature controller thermostat front panel up top there. And this is the incubator. We keep five liter water bottles in here in case there's any power failures. Obviously that water is going to help hold the temperature a lot longer. This ESCOM is a big problem. They cut all the power cuts and everything. So the eggs here have started to hatch. It has taken 79 days at the temperatures that we have incubated these little guys. So we'll get them out and have a look. Okay, there we go. This little one you can see is trying to get back in his egg, but he's struggling. So we'll make a little bit of an opening here for him. So you can see the little guys have cut with their egg tooths. Okay, all nice and sliced there. Now normally we would incubate um, ball python eggs at about uh, 31.5 degrees, say 32. I always normally just go for 31.5. 
and then it'll take about 60 to 65 days. So we currently at 79 days. Um, we incubated these guys at a lower temperature of 28.5 because we had some other eggs that were incubating at that temperature as well. Now with some eggs, sometimes it could maybe um, be a little harmful to not incubate at the correct temperatures but normally higher than recommended would be more of a problem than lower. You can just see these little guys are struggling to get back in there. Just want to try and open this up ah, so these guys have a little more space. You can actually see there's not much um, red veining or anything. There's a little bit of blood vessel. So these little dudes look nice and fully formed and everything. Now eggs are actually a lot harder than people give them credit for. See all of these little guys are getting stuck when they're trying to get back into their eggs. Yeah, because obviously with pythons the um, mother is going to obviously incubate the eggs basking in the sun or getting somewhere warm and then wrapping around the eggs to transferring that heat to the babies but now uh, every time she's gone the temperatures don't stay 100% con um, consistent you know they do vary they go up and down and there's like a lot of other snakes that are just laid you know the eggs are laid and then the snakes leave they're going to experience day night temperatures maybe <laughs> all right well here we go and so you can see these eggs are actually still really plump a lot of the time incubating at uh, warmer temperatures like the 32 degrees or so which is recommended you get quite a dimpled dimpled in egg but i've incubated them at this temperature before and have had a hundred percent success rate you can see these eggs almost look like perfect the day they were laid and the babies all ate very well and that so we'll see how these babies go as well so I'm just making bigger windows for the ones that have slit I'm actually gonna let the others just cut on their own um, all just normal little ball pythons so for a lot of people who are watching this and there's oh there's nothing exciting coming out of here I think these are pretty exciting enough they don't have to be any sort of mutation. Ball pythons are a really cool species. But, um, yeah, I was say not too into the mutations, really. I mean, I wouldn't actually even breed a lot of snakes if I didn't act, uh, have to, to sort of raise funds for the business. I have to do a little bit of everything. So, yeah, so all these eggs are looking really good. There's no spots or molding or anything. So our substrate medium worked very well. It's still slightly damp, a little bit drier than it was. I didn't do anything the whole 79 days. I didn't add any moisture. I barely opened to even look at these eggs because the tub is see-through and my incubator is a Coke fridge, which is see-through glass panel. Um, I can easily just see when they're starting to hatch. So all I've got is just a very few little ventilation holes around the container and there we go a lot of the time what you can do is actually you know you weigh how much water you put in and you weigh the box okay and then you can see oh uh, you're losing so much weight you can add that weight in water to top up if it is drying out but a lot of the time i'll just go with a spray bottle and i'll just spray around the eggs as long as there's humidity for them to hatch and you don't want anything that's totally stagnant and too wet or anything like that. A lot of guys also hatch their eggs with not even being in contact with the substrate medium at all. You can rest them on little bars, little plastic bars with water at the bottom. So as long as they got humidity and they got good, uh, they got some ventilation because obviously the eggs are breathing and temperature very very important obviously so yeah so we're just gonna let these others slit a lot of people we cut the eggs I also do cu cut the eggs as well for some people it's a very controversial thing cutting the egg Lynn and you know when they said just let it happen naturally there's nothing natural about this it's in a captive environment things are different snakes can have much harder calcified eggs than in the wild they can experience different um, types of mold and bacteria and stuff that attack the egg which makes it thinner that they can get out and they use an egg tooth to cut so sometimes when the egg is a bit hard 
the egg tooth breaks off and the baby suffocates inside the egg. So that's why a lot of people cut. So whether you cut or you don't, who cares? It's a, at the end of the day, you're just wanting to give the best start to the animals. So we're just going to let these guys cut on their own because these eggs are very soft. They're not hard shelled at all. And I'm sure they're not going to have a problem. We'll just see how it goes. But that's not too bad, 100%. Um, healthy eggs here. We should get a hundred percent hatch rate unless uh, maybe there's a deformed baby or something inside And he's unable to hatch But um, you know we can see how it goes later and then we'll take them all out and get them in their new homes All right, so it's 24 hours later and uh, Our babies are out already So from slitting in 24 hours they actually came out the egg they're quite nice, fat, healthy little babies. Um, they've most of them have absorbed all their umbilical and everything. So you see, it's just got that little button there, which is normal. That'll sort of just shrivel up and won't be a problem at all. A lot of the times when you cut the eggs, it actually takes about sometimes two, three days before they even come out. Because a lot of the time with cutting, sometimes maybe a bit early. But either way, you get the babies out. So we're just going to pop these babies into this tub next door. We're going to give them a little wash just to get the vermiculite off. See why they call them ball pythons. Rolling up in a little ball. Normally the head's kind of hidden away, but this one's hasn't got it done right. <laughs> this one here is hiding his head nicely. So if something's trying to attack this animal. With hiding its head, it's got a lot of body muscle to protect the head. Obviously, the head's the most vulnerable part of the snake. So, very, very clever defense. And then I've even seen some of them, very few, they'll turn in a ball like this, then they'll strike out like crazy and zoop into a ball again, which is really amazing. Very cool defense. Okay, so these guys are all out on their own. Now we have got a little problem child, this one over here, it's slit, slit the egg little hole there, 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 and on this side here, and I tore this piece open, this little baby didn't make it. Now it was trying to cut and it might have actually drowned in the egg, and this is exactly why some people cut the egg. As you can see there's a little bit of umbilical that's nothing bad or anything but he didn't make it and otherwise he's absolutely perfect so this is the reason why some people cut the eggs this little guy drowned okay so we do have one egg here that has not cut yet so we'll maybe just cut a window in there for it and then we've got this one he's got his window that one's safe these ones all alive okay so we do obviously get the casualties but maybe if we slit the egg, we would still have that one. Okay, I didn't actually get a blade or anything. I'm just going to just rip a little hole in this one. I see nice and nice clear liquid there. Okay, and then we just get some of that fluid out. Now there's a nice big air pocket that this snake can breathe and have its first breath. All right, well there we go, from incubation to hatching, not too bad. Pity about the one loss here, but it happens. Um, got a nice bit of king cobra food there maybe. But yeah, uh, cool.